Sydney's cruise ship capacity is at its limit. The overseas passenger terminal can only take one ship at a time and White Bay is unable to take any ships that can't fit under the Harbour Bridge. And with other options around Sydney being ruled out, it's time to talk about the next options, Newcastle and Port Kembla. With being at such capacity and while not being officially confirmed because of this issue, some cruise lines are pulling out of the Australian market like Virgin Voyages and Cunard, while others such as Princess and Royal Caribbean are reducing the amount of ships coming to Australia. In fact, Adrian, the cruise and travel guy, asked the same question in one of his videos. Sydney being at capacity isn't an unknown problem or just being ignored. Even in 2019, Infrastructure Australia had already established that something needed to be done. Here's the most up-to-date quote. Before COVID-19 onset, there is insufficient berthing capacity for large cruise ships at Sydney's overseas passenger terminal, particularly during the peak cruising season around the summer period. While there is capacity at the White Bay Cruise Terminal, it does not cater for the industry shift towards larger ships, which cannot fit under the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read the whole thing. So essentially, Sydney currently has two terminals, the Overseas Passenger Terminal, which can only take one ship at a time, and the second terminal at White Bay, but it can't take any ships that can't go under the Harbour Bridge, which has a height clearance of 49 metres. Let's be realistic here, they're not going to remove or modify the Sydney Harbour Bridge because of cruise ships, it's one of the most iconic structures in the world, it's never going to happen. The only option for larger ships to use White Bay is for the ships to be modified to give them clearance, and that's if they can go low enough. P&L Australia, which sails all year round in Australia, had to modify two ships when they received them, Pacific Adventure and the Pacific Encounter to get under that limit. But other companies aren't going to do that if they don't sail all year round. So for Sydney siders to have more chances to cruise and to get much more larger ships, the only option is for another cruise terminal, but that's a problem itself. Unfortunately, every other option in Sydney, such as Port Botany and Garden Island, have all been ruled out in one way or another. The only other option is to move further out, away from Sydney itself and onto the two closest ports, Newcastle, and if news reports are accurate, the current front runner, Port Kembla. But is Port Kembla really the best option? Let's explore it. First things first, if you're not sure where either one is, Newcastle is located north of Sydney and Port Kembla is to the south in Wollongong. To actually see which one is better, I think you've got to think about someone that's coming from either internationally or interstate. Measuring if someone is coming for a short car ride from Sydney or whichever port you're closest to isn't going to be unbiased. So I think we have to imagine what would be easier for a person coming from overseas or interstate and these options for most are going to be either by plane or by train. So we're going to see what's easier from Sydney's international airport if they're coming from overseas. I was also going to measure the domestic terminal but since they are next to each other I found there's only a few minutes difference. I'll use Google Maps to see which one is quicker if you're taking a car or train from there since both Newcastle and Port Campbell are accessible by train. You've then got to measure the people coming interstate by train. For that, I'll measure the central station since it's the main train hub. I'll measure that by train and car, although I'm not sure why you would take a car if you're already at the station. We then have to think about anything that is close to the new ports if they're built there, like local airports and how far they are to the port if it's easier for someone to arrive close by. For Newcastle, according to Port of Newcastle website, the current place they have cruise ships is in Carrington. So for this measurement, we have to assume it will most likely be there. Let's start off and assume that someone has picked you up by car and is taking you there from the airport. According to Google Maps, it will take you 2 hours and 20 minutes provided you use toll roads. And without tolls, it will be 2 hours 41 minutes. And if you decide to take the train from the airport, it will be approximately 3 and a half to 4 hours depending on the trains you take. Now onto Port Kembla, unlike Newcastle I couldn't find exactly where the ships had previously docked from, so we're going to assume it's the outer harbour. Let's start by getting picked up by a car from the airport. It's an hour and 27 minutes and that trip doesn't have any tolls. Taking the train it's about two and a half hours to three hours. Now let's measure the train itself from Central Station. To Newcastle by car it's two hours and 12 minutes with a toll and without a toll it's two hours and 21 minutes. By train, it's 3 hours and 43 minutes. For Port Kembla by car, with tolls, it's an hour and 36. Without tolls, it's an hour and 46. By train, it's 2 hours and 27 minutes. And lastly, let's talk about travelling to the closest airport. 
For Newcastle, the closest airport is, of course, Newcastle Airport. It's Australia's sixth largest regional airport and has many lawyer lines like Virgin and Qantas Link, which go to many different locations like the Gold Coast, Melbourne, Brisbane, plus many others on the east coast of Australia. To get to the airport to the cruise, it will take approximately 27 minutes by car or by train an hour and seven. The closest airport for Port Kembla is Shell Harbour. It is only currently serviced by Link Airways with flights from Melbourne and Brisbane. By car it's 22 minutes and by train it's an hour and 29. So what do you think? Should Port Kembla or Newcastle be considered a new cruise terminal? Would you even consider taking a cruise from there? Or do you think there is somewhere else that you think should be another cruise terminal? Leave us a comment to tell us. Also, if you found this interesting, why not give the video a like and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we have plenty of cruise related content. So after all that, where do I think the better option actually is? First off, yes, Sydney definitely needs a new cruise terminal. Having a second terminal that goes under the Harbour Bridge severely limits our options as to where cruise ships can arrive. If that's our only option as a secondary terminal, we'll never get out of our current situation. I think we can all agree that the third terminal would be better suited to being in Sydney. After all, you'd be hard up finding anyone that wouldn't want to depart from there. Especially anyone that's an international tourist or someone that's from interstate that doesn't get to see Sydney all that often. I have no doubt about that. After all, and I might be a bit biased about this, but Sydney is the best cruise destination to depart from in the world. But as for the question itself, if we can't get a cruise terminal in Sydney, should it be Newcastle or Port Kembla? If you're an international traveller, it's Port Kembla. It's really a no-brainer. If you decide to go straight from the airport to the cruise port, you're travelling for essentially an hour or more less if you go to Port Kembla. And if you decide to stay in Sydney for a little bit before the cruise, it's still less travel when you go to the cruise terminal. As for internet and regional passengers, there's no doubt that there are more options to travel to Newcastle Airport, but that's only if you're close to one of the airports that go to Newcastle. If you're coming in by train or by Sydney Airport, Port Kembla is the better option. So after all that, I have to give this one to Port Kembla if the competition is just between Newcastle and Port Kembla. I want to add another point about how I think the cruise terminals will be picked if there is a third terminal, whether it's within Sydney or not. The overseas passenger terminal will be the main priority terminal. It'll have first priority over any ship, unless that ship for whatever reason can't fit there. If that has a ship, White Bay will get next priority, but that will depend on the size of the ship. After all these considerations have been taken, then only the third terminal will be operational. If you want to know what I thought about those passengers that were denied boarding on the Norwegian Dawn, have a look at this video here. And thanks for watching.